Hello everybody, Krista from Colorado Custom Lures doing a quick tutorial on how to create a stencil with your Silhouette Cameo. Um, this will work for Cricut, I just don't know the software so th there may be some differences. I downloaded to my iPad an app called Sketchbook and I'm going to use my Apple Pencil with this. So click on that, we're going to hit the plus sign at the bottom and we're going to do new from image from the menu and then I'm going to go to import photo. It'll take me to my photos and then I am going to click on uh, image that I downloaded from the internet um, of a discontinued fat wrap by Rapala in the crop pattern and that is no longer made. So you can see the lines here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this uh, less uh, opaque so that it's more of a shadow. So I am going to click on trying to remember how to do this. The, click on down here on the layer and you're gonna make it just, you know, nice and light, okay? That way it won't interfere when you're, when you're um, getting the Silhouette Cameo uh, software to recognize your design. Then I'm gonna go out of that menu by just clicking anywhere and I'm going to click on add another layer with the plus sign. So I'm gonna click on this layer, then I'm going to come over here and I'm gonna select a pen. I like the legacy pen, the felt tip, and I just use the small, the small version. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to come up to the screen and I, your hand won't affect the screen. I'm going to trace around this and I'm not going to be super accurate right now because I'm just showing you guys how to do this. And then you want to close this at the top as well so that uh, when you go to fill it in, you don't have, um, you, it won't, you'll see what happens when you try and fill it in and you don't have the appropriate, uh, the lines closed appropriately. It won't work very well. So we just trace around this, you know, craw outline. And I already have one of these completed, so it does work. So real quick, I'm just gonna make, make sure that's all closed up. Otherwise, um, you'll see what happens. I'm sure I'll make a mistake on one of these and it'll create a problem. So you're gonna close these up. So that's what your stencil is gonna look out. You're gonna come up here to the paint bucket. Okay, you wanna make sure it's black. And then you're gonna tap inside of the lines to fill them in. See what happens if you tap outside the line? You just hit back and that'll erase it. Now that tells me that my lines aren't closed up here. So what I'm gonna do is just zoom in. You can see there's a little gap right there. So when I hit that, it's just making the whole rest of the screen black. So I'm gonna go back to my pen real quick and just touch that up. Just make sure it doesn't really have to be fancy just so you close it up and then go back to the paint bucket. Fill that, fill this one, fill this one. Just fill all of them. Uh oh, it's not supposed to recognize your finger, but it did that time. So I'm going to zoom back out so I can get this little one here. Now we have the lines. So we're going to save this by clicking up here on the little menu icon which should work, but it's not working. There we go. And I am going to click share. Now I'm gonna send this to myself. So I'm gonna click the mail, uh, and then I'm gonna send this to myself, coloradolures at gmail.com, and I'll just name it Fat Wrap Crawl, okay? So I'm gonna send this to myself, and now I have to switch gears to my laptop. Okay, so we have the stencil drawn out. It's not perfect. Uh, you can use, there's an eraser tool on there as well that works really good if you wanna tighten up the edges. Uh, you just kinda have to play with it. It's very, very user friendly. So I'm gonna go over here to my uh, email and I'm gonna make sure I'm on the right email because I have a few different email accounts that I use. And I'm gonna refresh this so that I can see the mail come through with that image. So there it is. So I'm gonna download this. <clears throat> And uh, I'll try and turn this so that you can see. So I'm just gonna download this real quick here. Um, I just have a cheap HP computer. Uh, I wish that I had a Mac, but um, someday it'll be in the budget, but not right now. So I'm gonna save as, I'm gonna go to my stencils folder, and I'm gonna rename this Fat Wrap. I already have one called Fat Wrap Cross Stencil because I've already completed this once. So I'm gonna call this fat wrap. I'm gonna save it. 
Okay, so it's saved now. I'm gonna go to my, my Cameo software. So this is the software for the Silhouette um, Studio. This is the designer edition, which is like about 20, I think it costs you about $40 extra, but it's a lot more user-friendly. You can pull uh, files directly from your computer rather than importing them and then using them. It's just a lot faster. So I'm gonna go to File Open. I'm gonna open up that file. It's called Fat Wrap Cross Stencil. So I'm gonna type in fat and I'll go to Fat Wrap, search for that. And there it is, okay? So you can zoom this screen in as well so that you can see a little closer version of it. And you'll wanna know a general idea of what your dimensions are on the lure that you wanna put the stencil on. In this case, for me, it was an actual fat wrap. Um, and I don't remember what the dimensions are. So usually what I'll do is I'll just click on it. Then all you gotta do is go to this corner. There's a little corner icon here. I'm gonna try and show you this as close as you can. I'm not real good at filming screenshots. There's a little corner icon, it'll give you two arrows, and then just drag it to make it bigger or smaller. So I'm gonna make this smaller because it's definitely not four inches long. We'll make it, let's say we'll make one that's 2.2. And then I'll trace that. So the trace icon is right here. It looks like a little butterfly kind of. Then you'll click on select trace area. And then you'll go ahead and you'll just pull this little box around the area you wanna trace. It'll highlight the areas that it's gonna trace in yellow. And then you're gonna click down here on trace. And then you can pull this image away. So we're gonna pull it away over here. And then let's just, let's just, um, shrink this a little bit and make it a little smaller. So I usually create a few different sizes so that if, if I'm off a little bit, then I have a few different sizes where I can figure out which one's gonna fit best. I just use cardstock, so I'm not at a high risk of um, wasting. I mean, it's not mylar, uh, it cuts pretty easy. And then if you were to damage, uh, say damage your stencil you can just cut another one and you just save this file and uh, you can reuse the file So now what I'm gonna do is I have this ready to go. I'm gonna load up my paper This is the silhouette cameo mat. I keep this plastic over it so it doesn't get dust on it um, If you lose the stick on this mat the easiest way to get it back is to use this Krylon easy tack You don't need much of it. Just a little misting will go a long way if you use too much It'll be hard to get the residue off the mat when you're finished. So just a little bit, um, and then you just scrape it off with a credit card or whatever. So this is just um, some, uh, I'm sorry, this is just some uh, cardstock. You can just get this wherever, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, whatever. Um, I have my mat turned on the, on the uh, view, so I'm gonna stick this in the corner. Normally, your, your mat view, I have it turned, so. It's gonna go in the upper right hand corner. In this case, normally you would have it up here in the upper left hand corner. Um, so this is just a little cameo. You're just gonna line, there's uh, some lines on here and I'll try and turn this so you can see. And you just line up the mat with the lines uh, on the sides so that it fits into the rollers. Try and make sure this is stuck down good so it doesn't move around when it's cutting. And then just click on, when you have it lined up, click on the load button. It'll pull the mat in. You can close this if you want to, but you don't have to. Okay, so that's all ready to go. So now I'm gonna go back over to my computer here, and I'm gonna go to the send button up here on the right. Okay, that's not gonna send it right away, but you wanna make sure your settings are right. So for cardstock, um, I use number five on this little roller bar. At the speed I use is four. For force, I use 28, and I've tested this back and forth. I've cut through mats, I've done it all. And 28 seems to work the best for me, and I do one pass. And then this setting is saved in here. You can um, save it, you hit save as, and it's called cardstock, plain, cut, edited. That means I edited it. So you just click save as right here on your computer screen, and then you just save these settings. So I'll come down here, make sure you have it on cut, because there's no cut, cut, and cut edge. Make sure you have it on cut. Mine defaults to cut, but make sure you have this selected if yours does not default. And then you'll hit send. So now you can watch it do its magic. Did that go? There it goes. It's probably just my slow computer that was taking a long time. So I'm just gonna um, 
I don't have a lot of space. I'm just gonna set this aside here. So you'll see it's getting ready. It's, I don't know, calibrating, whatever you wanna call it. It's getting ready to cut. So this will auto feed this, but usually I have a table under it. So I'm just gonna hold it up with my hand since I have it turned so you can see what's happening here. And it just does its thing. So normally it would be cutting on the left side, but I had my, uh, I had my grid flipped and I didn't wanna change it. So I just left it. So if you're doing a bigger stencil, um, it'll take you know a little bit longer if it's more detailed. This is pretty simple, it'll only take a few seconds. So it'll sit it out just like that. And it'll align back on the left here. And then once it says it's done working, you might have to wait, you gotta be patient. You'll hit unload. It'll unload and then you can peel off the cardstock. And then the little pieces of the stencil that you don't want will be stuck on the mat if you can see that. See if you can see them um, right there. And then here's your stencil, right? So you'll just cut that out then and match it up with your lure and see which size fits best. And um, it's just that simple. If you want to ask me questions uh, and I don't answer your questions on YouTube, feel free to email me at coloradolures at gmail.com. You can also find me on Facebook at Colorado Custom Lures or um, my website is coloradocustomlures.com and uh, my contact information is there as well. So hopefully you found that helpful and um, I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for watching and take care.